uh, our scripture was read earlier. It's going to come from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. And while you guys are getting there, I want to just give thanks to the church as a whole, as well as uh, Sister April for acknowledging um, where we were as a church uh, one year ago. Um, it didn't escape me. Um, I just been doing some quiet reflection. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be able to share soon all that um, has going on in my head. But thank you so much, uh, Sister April, for acknowledging it. And I am truly grateful to everyone uh, for the support and the love that uh, BCC has shown me uh, over the years since my ordination, my ordination. Okay, and that's First Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one serves by the strength that God provides, in order that, every, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, church. Oh, Lord, we just want to thank you for this service so far. God, we want to thank you for just what you are, have done in this place during this worship service, dear God. Lord, we want to thank you for everyone that is here with us, both members as well as guests. Lord, we want to thank you for bringing us in this space, in this time, in this moment, because we know nothing with you is by chance. So, Lord, as we go into our preach word, God, we ask that you come through me powerful and give your people the word that you would have for them today, Lord. Lord, we ask that we remove all distractions and put everyone's eyes and mind on you, dear God. Lord, I just want to ask that you be with me, dear God. Lord, remove me from this process, dear God, but use me as your vessel to come through powerfully, dear God, to your people. Lord, I thank you and I praise you and I'm humbled by this opportunity. In your name, amen. So you guys heard we went to a graduation on Friday and you heard the good time that we had. Well, Friday evening, I had a bright idea. And my family for once went along with me on my bright idea. I had the idea that since we now had a, a pump, that we could blow up the tires on the bikes and we could go for a bike ride. Now, church, I want to put this into perspective for you. We've owned these bikes since 2018, but the last time I can recall we rode them was 2019. So I knew that this was going to be a tough ride, but boy, was I in for a surprise. So I got on my bike after Scott blew it up, and I took a swirl around the, the parking lot, and it was all flat. So I was riding, I put some speed to it. I said, oh, I got this. And then when you're coming out of my neighborhood and you're going down the parking lot, you go downhill. It's an incline. So I rode that bike downhill, took my hands off the pedals and was coasting down with the wind going. I said, oh yeah, I got this. And then so as I swung out, I was leading. I was the one in front. So I picked the path we were going to go on. So I hung a left. We went on a path, and I'm just riding and going. There was a man with this dog. I clicked my little bell, ding, 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 and I'm flying ahead on my bike. Scott and Maya are bringing up the rear, and I'm going forward. Everything is going good because we've been downhill on flat land. And then as I turn to the right, we hit another path, and I'm zooming ahead of them. 
and then I encountered a hill. And I said, hill ahead. And I started pedaling really fast in preparation for this hill to move upward. And I made it up. I said, whoo, okay, all right, that burnt a little bit. But then I hit a couple more hills. But to save you from the embarrassment of this ride I had, let me just say, we made it home safely. Maya and Scott were leading the path, and I was bringing up the rear rear. I had to stop to rest my legs, to catch my breath, and to use my inhaler. I was screaming, bringing up the rear, saying, Lord, help me. I was not prepared to physically endure the hills that were on that ride. And so as we go on to today's scriptural passage, we see that the Apostle Peter, as the uh, book bears his name, um, is writing to a group of people. First Peter chapter 1 verse 1 says that those um, who are the elect of the dispersion in Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. And the recipients of this letter are fairly new believers. And they are on their journey to following Christ and living by faith as, as Christ their Lord in Christ their Lord and Savior. And they are living and trying to survive in some difficult times. It seems like the more they try to live for Christ, they seem to be moving uphill. They seem to be living in challenging times as they are experiencing persecution for their beliefs. And what seemed like once and where life was once an easy ride, where they were coasting on flat land or coasting downhill, they seem like they're now constantly under threat and life just seems like an uphill battle due to their new identity in Christ. And church, it's important that as these believers are living, that we too must remember that no matter how fast we think we can ride, no matter how fast we think we can run, no matter how fast of a talker we think we are, and how quick you believe you can move on your feet, as we are living in a world of sin, we are going to encounter times and seasons in our lives where we seem to be riding and moving on an uphill battle. No matter how much we try to move, we seem like we can't get to the top of this hill. And I say that to say that we are going to experience difficult times and suffering in our journeys. Church, we can't outride it, we can't outwalk it, and we can't outtalk it. But as believers in Jesus Christ, we must understand that even as we endure challenging times, that we are called to show love. 1 Peter chapter 8, verses 18 to 22, Peter reminds us that the very foundation of our faith, that Christ was not without suffering. That although he did not sin, that he endured suffering in order to do what was right. Peter reminds in verse 18, for Christ also suffered once for our sins, the righteous, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. So we understand, and we've discussed this before, that the very path that Christ undertook, the good thing that he did on our behalf, led him down a path of suffering. So church, sometimes even when you're doing the best, even when you're doing good, there's suffering that's going to come in your way. But I want us to remember that even though Christ took on the path of suffering, which is dying for our sins, that it was out of that suffering that he was exalted at the right hand of the Father. And so as we transition now 
into the verse 4, or chapter 4, I should say, 1 Peter chapter 4. Peter has summarized all about Christ's suffering, how Christ has suffered. And he says in, in verse 1 of chapter 4, Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourself with the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin so as to live the rest of your time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. So he is saying that although we exist, those of us who believe in Christ, those of us who has died to our old path, that we may still exist in the flesh, but it is not to please our, our flesh, but it is to live for God and God alone. So Peter tells these believers who are going through some times of suffering, he's telling these believers who feel like they're just facing an uphill battle and can't get to the steady plane. He's saying that you got to arm yourselves. He's saying you got to get ready. You got to prepare yourself. And how he's saying to do it is you got to prepare yourself with the same thinking as Christ. He's saying that if Christ endured suffering for you, then is it too much to endure the suffering and do and do for the God that died for you? Is it too much? He's saying if Christ without sin took to the cross and suffered, well, me, who is a sinner, who am I to think I can live a life and not experience some pain and some pedaling uphill every once in a while? Arm yourselves today, church. And he's saying that arming yourself, it's a preparation of what's to come. I shared that I attended a graduation on Friday. And I thought the ceremony was absolutely amazing from beginning to end. But there was one part of that ceremony that had me at the edge of my seat that I couldn't take my eyes off of what was going on. Three graduates who had, were graduating the class of 2023 from Coppin State were getting ready to receive their military commission. And they marched on the stage. I'd never seen this part of the ceremony before. Not in a cap and gown, but in a U.S. Army uniform. Chiseled, band, oh, they were tight. And they came on the stage as they were being commissioned into the U.S. Army. And what struck me was, although they were graduates, they weren't dressed in worldly clothes. They weren't dressed in cap and gowns. They were suited up for the life that was before them. They understood that they had to walk away from some stuff that was behind them. And see, as they were dressed, they were dressed for the second lieutenant that they were about to become on that stage. And as they took their oath and they stood there tall, they were armed with the training to go out and serve their country. The smallest one, a young lady, was on her way into active duty to be an army medic. And they were dressed, prepared, armed, and equipped for the life that they were being called into. And that is what we need to understand that we need to do as believers. The old life of sin is behind us. Your past is behind us. And Paul is telling these believers that I can't promise you that everything is going to be coasting on flat land. I can't promise you that you'll always be riding downhill with the wind whipping to your hair. But I'm telling you that if you would arm yourself to begin to ride uphill, you will have the power that's within you. You will be equipped with the Holy Spirit that's within you. That when you hit a hill, you will be able to move up. 
see, and that's where it brings us to verse 7, because verse 7, which starts today's passage, it says the end of all things are at hand. Church, we are living in the church age. We've been studying it through the book of Acts. And this is the age that we're living in before our Lord and Savior returns, just as he promised he would. And so Paul is saying, therefore, because of all that I have told you, because I've told you Christ has suffered. I have told you to arm yourself with the same way of thinking. I've told you that we're living in the end times. So now this is what you need to do today. Be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. See, Peter is telling the believers that you got to be clear-headed. Because when you hit the hill, you can't panic. You can't be out there screaming like you've lost your mind. Spiritually, you have to keep your head in the game and you have to remember that you got a God who does not sleep or slumber. You have God's spirit within you that when you call out, someone is going to respond. You have been equipped with a helper and a comforter. And that's why Romans chapter 8 verse 26 says, and likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For when we don't know what to pray as we ought to, the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groaning too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to God's will. And that's why he's saying, be self-controlled and sober-minded for your prayers. Because if you're out there panicking and screaming, you're going to forget that you've been equipped with a helper and a comforter that says that even if you would just come in faith and go to your knees, even if you don't have the words, I've already sent the words up to God on your behalf. See, a similar thing happened to me when I was on that path, a little too proud for my own good. I think by the time I hit hill number two, I just couldn't take it no more. And I said, Scott, my chain is not working. I can't get up this hill. And Scott yells from behind me, have you shifted into an easier gear? And I looked down at the handlebars and said, Oh, right, I can shift down. And I yelled back, how do I do it? And he's like, the shifts are there, just shift down into an easier gear. Well, to spare y'all the embarrassment of that ride, I'm here to tell you that sometimes when we are moving up the hill of adversity, sometimes when we are moving up the hill of depression, sometimes when we are moving up the hill of conflict, our family, we forget that we've been equipped with something that's within us, that if we would just shift into gear and get on our knees and begin to pray to God, that you would realize that you can take that situation in a whole lot more ease than in your own strength. We got a helper who's there with us during our life of suffering. But we got to remain calm and clear-headed. We can't always be the one that want to throw in the towel and give up hope. We got to remember that even the God, that the Christ that suffered for us said that I will not leave you as orphans, that you have a helper. We have to also remember that because we are in Christ, we have been reconnected to the Father, and because Christ did all that he did, that when he went back, that the promise was fulfilled, and we were sent the Holy Spirit to comfort us. So it's time for us to shift into the right gear. Stop panicking and start praying. Stop worrying and start worshiping. Stop trying to panic and throw in the towel and begin to praise God for how he's going to bring you up from the bottom of this valley up to the top of that peak. Start praising God. And then our scripture goes in and it says, 
in our theme this month, above all else, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sin. If you read that in the New Living Translation, similar, but it says most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other for love covers a multitude of sin. See, and what we gotta remember that we can do a lot of things in this world that looks good on the outside. We can be known for a lot of things in this world. But Peter is very clear, most important of all. So if you send somebody to the store with a whole list of stuff, my grandmother used to say, if you don't get nothing else, get this. And that usually implied do not return to that house without that. Because she was very clear. She gave you the money. If the money don't cover it all, get this. But you still had a problem because if you didn't let them, if you didn't chip in the money to cover all of it, you're going to have a problem when you get back. So, but her words were always, if the money ain't enough, get this. And what that implied to the person that was sent out is there's an order on how you go about this list. So through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Peter Pence, most important of all. See, when Christ returns, you may have think that you had a list of stuff to do, but if love has not made it back to you, then you have not done what we've been sent out to do. Don't forget it in your day-to-day -day list. Don't forget it when you make your plans. Don't forget it when you make your goals. And the word that is used here when it says deeply, it says to love deeply. The word used here is really referring to an athlete. And it's referring to an athlete who wants to work hard who wants to win this race, who wants to achieve their goal, so they stretch themselves to achieve what they have to do. They strain and they go beyond in order to win this race. And so that's the word that's connected to love. So the title of today's sermon, I know it's been what is propelled forward by love. Propel forward by love. Because when we decide that we are going to love deeply and demonstrate love, we have to stretch ourselves beyond what we can do in our own strength. Love moves us towards just operating in the flesh and move towards moving as Christ moved. Love causes us to move beyond our feelings of being tired. Love causes us to move beyond, well, this is the third time and I'm not putting up with it anymore. Love causes us to move beyond, well, I'm, I don't know if I have enough for you and me. And love causes you to stretch across and see another brother or sister who needs God's love and you do everything in your power to show love. Love causes you to move beyond staying angry and to show compassion. Love causes you to move beyond your feelings and to apply grace to that situation. Church, love causes us to forgive even when it hurts deeply. Love causes us to either be quiet or use gentle words instead of cutting others with our tongues. Love has power, church. The scripture said that love covers a multitude of sin. Now let me speak a little bit to cover. When we refer to love covering a multitude of sin, it doesn't mean we cover it and forget that it's happening so we look the other way. That's not how love covers a multitude of sin. Love covering a multitude of sin 
means that when we just apply sin over the wounds of life, and when we apply sin over the scrapes, and when we apply sin, I'm sorry, love, over the offenses, sorry about that, when we apply love over the offenses, what that means is that comfort and that healing power is now applied to that place where there was once hurt. It means that God's transformational work can now move in powerfully into a place where pain once existed. Love means that where there were once differences, that if you would apply love, that they can now bring us closer together because we can demonstrate the love of Christ in this situation. We can put away differences and we can come together in love. We can allow love to nurse us back to health. We can allow love to nurse us out of our pain. We can allow love to nurse us out of depression. We can allow love to nurse us back to disappointment and strengthen us for the journey beyond. I stopped, we stopped for coffee on Friday. And there was a familiar song that was on the overhead in the place where I stopped for coffee. And I began to research that song because it fell in line with what I was going to preach today. And I realized that that song had been out since April of 1991. I was 12 years old at that time. But although I was a child, I heard this song on the radio and I heard the adults around me singing this song. So I learned the song and started singing the song too. And so at this older age, as I am on Friday, I hear the song and I began singing it as I'm moving through the store. The name of that song is Power of Love, Love Power by Luther Vandross. And then at some point they got to one of my favorite parts and I remember, and remember church, I don't sing so I talk it through. The song had the words, you got to believe in love. It's a feeling that's next to none. Can't stop until we are one with the power of love. Tell everyone to try. I promise you'll reach the sky. One thing that we can't deny is the power of love. And see, the words of that song, as I was walking through the store and I'm just jamming and snapping my fingers, it reminds me of the transformational power of love. It reminds me that love is a positive healing force and it is out of love that can bring forth the benefit, not only to heal me individually, it can heal my family. It can heal parent-child relationships. It can heal communities. It can heal our schools. It can heal our churches. The power of love. And the song was an anthem that encouraged everybody to embrace love for the benefit of not just for you, but with for everyone else. But church, I'm here to tell you, before Luther and his people took pen to paper, before power of love hit the airways in 19 or 1991, my Christ showed me the power of love because he came and dwelled as a man and he knew that I needed some love in my life. And so he came and lived a sinless life and he came and submitted himself to the cross and he died on the cross but before he got there let me not forget Isaiah 53 tells me that when the accusations came and the suffering came and the humiliation came it said that he didn't open up his mouth because sometimes we need to know when to talk and when to be quiet and so he didn't utter a word out of his mouth 
He took all of the lashes that he needed to take from me and to take for you. And he died on the cross. He took on sin and he took its best blow. And when he, they thought they had won and they had placed his dead body in a tomb, my word tells me that on the third day that the stone was rolled away and he rose with all power in his hand. So I, though I like the song, I don't need Luther to tell me the power of love. I got Jesus in the cross who died for my sins. And so before he went away, he told me a new commandment that I give to you. And he said, so that I am giving you a new commandment, love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other for love of one another will prove that you are my disciples. So I love the way Luther sends it, but I love the way my word tells it, that, that there's power in love. So church, I'm asking you today, when you face the hills of life, when you face those spots that you don't feel like you can move up on your own, when you face those places where you're like, Lord Jesus, get me up this rough spot. Remember the power of love. Apply his love to your life and then apply love to the situation you're facing. And it is through God's love that will propel you forward. Thank you, church. Amen.